slide 16. Derivatives and anomalies of the first arch, cleft and pouch. Item 1. The first or mandibular arch divides into two parts, the maxillary process and mandibular process. The cartilage of the maxillary process disappears, while the mandibular process persists as the case cartilage. The mesoderm of the first arch gives rise to the muscles of mastication, the anterior belly of the digastric muscle, and the tensor tympani. The mandibular process, malleus, incus, and sternomandibular ligament, the dentin and cementum, the triggers and cross of the helix, and the first aortic arch derivative, the facial artery. Item 2. My development of the first breaker arch derivatives result in various congenital malformations of the eyes, ears, palate, and mandible, which constitutes the first arch syndrome. This constellation of symptoms is a result of insufficient migration of cranial neural crest cells into the first breaker arch during the fourth developmental week. The two main manifestations of the first arch syndrome are recognized as trenchant curling syndrome and perrobin sequence. Other anomalies consist, consistent with these derivatives include agnatia, macronatia, and macronatia associated with abnormal development of the mandibular process. In anotia, macrotia, macrotia, and synotia are also related to the faulty development of the air. Item 3. The ectoderm of the fourth Breaker cleft develops into the epidermis of the cheeks, mandible and rostral half of the auricle, cranial nerve 5, salivary gland parenchyma of the parotid, some mandibular and some lingual glands, enamel of the teeth, the epithelial lining of the lips and tongue to the foramen second and the epidermis of the external auditory canal and tympanic membrane. Item 4. The most common abnormalities to the first breaker cleft is associated with the external auditory canal. This can generally be classified as aplasia, atresia, stenosis, and duplication. The common diagnosis of recurrent purulent draining otitis media with lymphadenopathy should allow the clinician to investigate a possible false breaker cleft duplication anomaly classified by work as type A or type 2 anomalies. Item 5. Endoderm of the first breaker pouch gives rise to the covering of the first arch and pouch, which passes as the eustachian tube, tympanic cavity, mastoid atrium, and cells, and the epithelial lining of the sides and floor of the mouth. Anomalous development thus produces atretic eustachian tubes common in children with recurrent otitis media, diverticular of estrogen tubes, absence of tympanic cavity or mastoid antrum and cells, double or perforated tympanic membrane, bifid and trifid tongue and bronchogenic nasopharyngeal cyst. 